Hello, everybody. How y'all doing today? Welcome to the Two Dads podcast segment. I hope you guys are ready. We have the two legends themselves, Mr. TGH and YP, also known as Yoshi Pro. Just had a really good race. TGH, of course, killing it, almost getting world record with five deaths. Apparently, his world record had three deaths, so it, apparently it's a normal thing. But uh, yeah, good race, guys. How y'all doing? What's going on? Thank you. Doing pretty well. Yourself? Doing great. Awesome. Uh, I'm good, man. Um, yeah, simply, simply could not be here today. Um, well, he's going to be here a bit later, but it was impossible for me to be here today, so we just got me. Um, yeah, so um, how was the race? Did you guys enjoy it? Yeah, I really did. Races are always fun with this game. Um, you know, zero RNG speed game. Uh, it's just it's just all execution all the way. And Is it really zero zero RNG? Wow. Yep. Okay. At least not pertaining to the speed run. Right, of course. Yeah. I mean, I, it almost feels like this game is, was, was made for speedrunning. They have the in-game timer and everything. Yeah, and it's amazing how, uh, how in tune the devs are as well with speedrunning. Um, like, they really, really care about the community. And the, 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 uh, the devs are speedrunners themselves as well. So it, that lends itself well to it. Right. And I remember I talked about this before, but there was an email I got once where one of the producers for A Had in Time uh, messaged me and was, was talking to me about that exact same thing. They literally talked about how they were looking, you know, at speedrunners and stuff and getting to know speedrunning because they wanted to base the, the speedrunning community uh, when they were making the game. They wanted yep. to have that influence. Yeah, and it's, it's really it's, smart. Sorry, I keep interrupting you. No, yeah, yeah. That's pretty much, you know, they, they, people are making games for speedrun purposes, it seems like. Yeah, true. And it's really smart of, of developers, in my opinion, to, uh, to like make games really accessible for speedrunning because it's like, um, you know, like it, it gets them attention. Like it gets them, yeah. like, you know, it's, it like gets the ball rolling there. Exactly. So for sure. Okay, so uh, let's, you know, I want to know about you guys a little bit. Uh, when did you guys get into speedrunning exactly? We could start with you, TGH. Sure. Um, I mean, I'm not as, uh, I'm, I'm not as much of an old boy as YP is, but uh, mm -hmm. I've been, uh, I mean, I've kind of been around. Like, okay, so I started in October 2015. My first really serious speed game was Undertale. Um, well, I say really serious. My first actual speed game was Pokemon Red, but let's not go there. Um, <laughs> uh, but yeah, Undertale I took seriously uh, starting in October of that year. Uh, and then I moved on to uh, Zelda Link's Awakening DX in I think the beginning of 2016. I ran that for a while until like the middle of last year. Uh, but yeah, that's, that's uh, let's see. And then what, Link to the Past, after LADX was Link to the Past, um, Speeder in that for a while, no major glitches mostly, um, as well as some randomizer stuff. Uh, what else? God, it's hard for me to think back right now. Mm -hmm. uh, some things happened between then and now, and now I'm running Celeste. So, <laughs> yeah, That's all yeah I, I, saw, <laughs> I saw in your Twitch profile that you run uh, ALTTP and Link's Awakening. Yep. Do oh, you yeah, have, Fe uh... Fez as well. Fez as well. Uh, and a game called Die as well that I ran that HDQ last year, or this, this actually past year. Oh, sweet. Do you have a, a is, is Zelda, were you a Zelda fan as a child and that's why you, you speed on those games or do you just yeah. like how the speed on looked? I've, I've always been a huge Zelda fan. Yeah. Um, so yeah. It's like, like most people. Yep. Yeah. 2D Zeldas mostly though. I, I speed right. ran Wind Waker for a while. Speed ran. Uh, <laughs> quote unquote. Uh, mm -hmm. But yeah, it's uh, what, that, that's another one we won't talk about. <laughs> okay, so how about you, Yoshi Pro? Give us a rundown. Uh, so I first got into like streaming speedrunning in like early 2013, late 2012, because uh, I that's a player I used to watch, Hero of Time. You know him as Jeff now. Uh, mm -hmm. He like speeded up or you uploaded a video on YouTube about his stream, and I was like, oh shit. So that's how I got into like speedruns live and stuff. Uh, the first real speed game I did was uh, Finding Wise. It's a really good game. All luck. Oh it's, yeah, I know that game. <laughs> it's the exact opposite of Celeste. It's just All right. you reset until you get good luck. And it's great. Uh, the first 
usually when I refer to my first serious speed game, I go to Plock, it's a Super Nintendo game, because that's the first game I kind of got good at. I ran a bunch of other garbage, but we won't talk about that. <laughs> yeah, so, I mean, uh, mentioning that, I looked at, you know, I took a look to, at your speedrun.com channel, and it was, <laughs> I was scrolling down for like 10 seconds, just this huge game list of, of <laughs> You speed on like a hundred games. What is that about? You just like experimenting with a bunch of games or? Yeah, I like messing around with games and whatever sticks, you know, just kind of check something at the wall. If it sticks, it sticks. That's and I'll bring pretty it interesting. The wall. Is it like you just did kind of like one run of many games to see if you like it? And if you didn't, you just like tried another one? Basically, sometimes I do two runs, you know, going really oh, out there. Maybe but two, uh, sometimes three. Sometimes three. But <laughs> I'd say like serious speed games, I've probably only had like eight nine right yeah okay yeah that's a lot a lot of work you you know so many games um but you did start in 2012 so i mean that's a lot of years yeah um you're much more veteran than both of us me and tgh big old boy that's me uh so tell me a bit about you guys's gdq experience it was a lot of fun um, I went for the whole week, and uh, you know it's always fun hanging out with people like new and old, um, you know, old friends, meeting new people, uh, matching names to faces, uh, and just like you know, it's just it's just always a great time. This is my fourth one that I went to uh, SGDQ right. this past SGDQ, and um, yeah, it's just it's just always a good time. I always enjoy going. Was this the first time? Well, obviously, because so this is a new game. The first time running. Uh, so last to the GDQ, mm-hmm. and was it how many GDQs have you been here to Yoshi Pro? I've been to two. I went to last year's Summer two. Games done quick, and this one it was a good time. Shout out to Sex Rex and uh, Pringles. Good game. Awesome. <laughs> <laughs> so, you guys have future plans to go to more GDQs, or oh, for sure, 100%. yeah. I've made it a point to like you know, even if I'm not running, to try my best to go to each GDQ. Mm-hmm. Um, with the exception of like the GDQX, I, I did submit uh, pretty much every Celeste category to GDQX, and we find out tonight actually. What oh, the really? Is. Yeah. Oh, I was the, actually the wondering about that tonight. Yeah. Okay. Um, with the exception of those, because like TwitchCon is a huge commitment for me to go to across the country. But uh, but yeah. Right. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. I was wondering about that because I submitted pretty much everything in Mario as well, hoping mm-hmm. that someone would get in. <clears throat> That's awesome. Uh, did you submit Yoshi Pro, or are you not going to uh, GDQX? I'm, I'm not going. I can't afford it. I have a uh, yeah. Northwest Speed Fest coming up, which is in like Seattle. So oh right, that. it's in October right. too. I've heard about that as well. Nice. Okay, so have you either? You guys ever speed ran a 3D game? Yes and yes. no. I, yes. One of my main games is a, a big Glover. 3D game. Yeah, Glover. Yeah, Glover, game. sorry. I saw that you run Glover Glover's and <laughs> I saw you run Glover in your in your in your channel and you have most of the records. You have really good times there. Uh, is it a I mean, is it a competitive game? Recently got really competitive. I lost a bunch of records recently to a guy named Dark AC Chess. He came up mm-hmm. like last year. He found a setup for one of the most random tricks in the game, which was nice. And then he okay. just grinded and he brought down the record by like Seven seconds for any resets, which is a lot because it's like a twelve-minute category. Ooh, so do you? You plan on hopping on that train again and trying to beat him? Oh yeah, for sure. That was probably my next endeavor. Oh sweet, sweet. And do you have a lot of motivation to try to come up on TG8's tail and beat him in an in Celeste, or do you think it's too good? Yeah, he's too good. There's other people <laughs> doing it now. My job is done. Ah, uh, okay, damn, dude. Uh, how about you, TG? Uh, yeah, I speed ran a 3D game called Fez. I'm just kidding. Um, <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, I mean, like, I dabbled in runs like Wind Waker, and um, I think there was another one. Maybe there wasn't another one. Oh, I also, I also tried to learn the Majora's Mask speed run as well. Uh, but I, but those, both of those were kind of interrupted. Uh, Majora's Mask. Um, as well as like the learning of like I, I I was trying to learn Super Mario World at one point, but mm-hmm. uh, both those were interrupted by learning of Fez. Um, okay. So switching out one 3D game for another, you know. 
Right. What exactly is Fez? I don't know. I don't really know about it, it. It's a it's a two D puzzle platformer where you can rotate the screen. It's actually it's actually like a three D game, but it's all the platforming's two D. So I was it was it was a joke mostly. <laughs> all right. <laughs> so okay. Um, do you guys notice? Uh, I was wanting to know this because I, I've never ran a two D game, but I'm I'm watching Celeste lately, and I have I, I really want to try the game out. I think it looks beautiful. The fact there's no RNG, the movement is great. I never ran a 2D game, but I wanted to know you guys' opinion on if there if there really is a difference between 2D games and 3D games when it comes to speedrunning. Do you think 3D games has more of a challenge because of the different the extra dimension, or do you think it doesn't really matter? Um, I know that when I was trying to learn 3D games, I can't really speak much because I have never actually properly run a 3D game, but uh, I completed mm. one run in Wind Waker. <laughs> um, <laughs> but uh, but uh, yeah, like the extra access was definitely like the thing that I had to get used to the most, and I I never really ended up doing it like properly. Um, right. I'm sure I could have if I continued, but it was that was definitely one setback for me for sure for for the learning. But um, but yeah, I think like uh eliminating that one axis in 2d games like really allows you to just concentrate on the other on the other two axes right. it's like it allows for you know like more i well not more optimization but like you know like less less to focus on in terms of the optimizations involved i guess yeah <clears throat> the 2d aspect i guess you focus more on the actual speed and a 3d there's the speed aspect but there's also precise angles the whole mm -hmm. angle it's a whole different dynamic, I guess. A whole extra one, I guess. Uh, what do you think, Yoshi Pro? You speedrun 3D games as well. So uh, what is your take on this? I feel like a game, it comes down to like the tech and movement mostly. Like a game, like a 2D game with high advanced tech and movement is going to be a lot harder to learn than, let's say, a 3D walkathon. But uh, right. if a 3D game has good tech and movement, let's say like Mario, right? Mar any Mario, mm -hmm. like Mario Sunshine, Mario 64. Then that would probably be harder overall to learn than like Celeste, even though Celeste has such a high skill ceiling and stuff. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, it comes down to like how you internalize the strats and whatnot. I feel like there's no correct answer because I feel like I do better in 3D games because I can just visualize it better. But 2D games, oh. it's a lot. That's a that's an interesting point actually, and I think honestly that might be one of the points as to why I was not eager to try 2d games is that i could i play a 3d game and i could see the game i don't know it's like i could see obvious things about the game to make speedrunning to get used to the game better i guess with 2d games it's kind of like uh probably because i'm just not used to it but um but yeah that's awesome dude i would definitely like to try the 2d games and see you know if i really like them you should and see what the difference is like Yep, I love Celeste. It looks great. Yeah, I think if you you know if you're looking to get into 2D, then Celeste is definitely the game for sure. sure. Yeah. Like the yeah, definitely one to consider seriously. Awesome. Um. Okay, I wanted to bring something to you guys or ask you guys' opinion. So as you know, our stream uh, is sponsored by GSA and Speedrun.com. GSA being the Global Speedrun Association. Um, we're brand new. Started. Pretty much less than a month ago, and uh, of course we have talks about starting seasons, season play with divisions and point systems, etc. And and we want to start that in January. Um, of course, there's going to be there's going to have tournaments involved, but not only tournaments. It's going to be um, fantasy leagues, you know, and certain games that have bingo. We're going to have bingo tournaments, and it's all going to be involved. What are you guys' opinion on this? And do you guys think that Celeste could be a good game for this kind of stuff? Um, I think if the uh, if the interest in Celeste as a game uh, has been any indication, I think it would do pretty well. You know, we have uh, we have almost five hundred any percent runners now uh, for Celeste on the leaderboard, right. and yeah, it's That's like crazy. Um, I'm not exactly sure what goes into. Uh, the tournaments or the seasons, as you mentioned, involved, but uh, mm. but it would definitely be interesting to see. Right, of course. I mean, it's a community-based uh, association. So mm. when once games get involved in the seasons, 
uh, each individual game would be ran by the community and people in the community who think that they could help run it. And basically, it would involve like what speed gaming has, uh, where there are tournaments, and more than just tournaments as well, depending on the game, what else, uh, whatever else that, that could be involved in the game. And there'll be point systems and divisions. So the better you are, the higher division you'll be in. And, uh, but it creates incentive for people to, to want to start playing, to be involved in the league, to create a professional background, of course. Mm -hmm. And Celeste being literally the highest active, the most active speedrun right now, speed game. Um, I think it has a lot, of, uh, a lot of opportunity there, you know? So hopefully yeah, sure. something might happen. We'll see what goes on in that sense. What is your, what is your opinion, YP? Uh, I'm in the same boat. I think it's positive, and I think Celeste would be a perfect fit because of how active it is currently, and it seems to only be growing consistently. I mean, GDQ happened, so I guess I'll have to wait a bit longer, but mm -hmm. still, it seems to be only growing, so can't imagine anything negative. That's awesome. So I want to know a bit more about Celeste itself, the games you guys, the game you guys ran today. Um, you know, what is like the the most important part of the game when it comes to speedrunning, you know, what is the, the hardest tech to learn, et cetera? Um, I think, uh, and I, I, people probably get tired of hearing me say this if you, if you listen to me a lot for some reason. <laughs> um, but I always say that Celeste is always about um, recovering and uh, adjusting to your own mistakes because Celeste is a game where you're going to make mistakes. Mm -hmm. um, you know, but like the top runners, what really separates the top runners from the um, from the aspiring top runners is the ability to take a potential like five to ten second time loss and turn that into a one second time loss. Um, and by the five five to ten second time loss, I'm talking about uh, a death, um, maybe at the end of a room or whatever. Uh, saving that death, you know, takes a lot of takes a lot of skill and like adap adaptation skill and like it's uh you know like a lot of a lot of practice and just getting used to the game and like being you know being good at controlling madeline uh and that's the name of the main character is madeline by the way um, madeline. You don't know. uh but yeah like just that particular aspect i think is the most important part uh you know like you can have good movement you can you know you can be like the fastest there is but if you can't save a potential death, then mm -hmm. your time might not be as good as they should be. You know? So when and you die, uh, I'll let you finish and then I'll ask. Um, I, I was about finished. Anyway. Okay. So when you die, do you always lose like roughly the same amount of time? It depends on what chapter you're in. It depends, it depends on, on which situation. It depends on the death. Um, so when you right. die, you go back to the beginning of a room, like pretty much always, uh, unless there's a certain checkpoint, uh, like for instance, on 3000 meter summit where there are flags as checkpoints. Um, but normally you go back to the beginning of a room and if you die at the very end of the room, uh, it can be very costly because right. you have to do the entire room over again. They're basically doing the entire room twice. Of course. So I saw, I actually saw YP in this race, um, he had a really good save. Um, it was a part where you're being chased by like one of the, like an enemy. Oh, yeah, and yeah, the... yeah. You 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 almost fell down. You right up. You about to fall down. You you like paused for like a second, and then when you unpause, you're able to save it. What happened there exactly? Uh, so I didn't clear a jump, and then normally if you like hit a wall, right? There's neutral wall jumps. So it's tech, right? So all right. How do you explain it? I don't know how to explain it to wall jumps. If you're so it's basically, jump, it was a wall jump. Okay. I think that's pretty. Yeah. Um, so if you do neutral wall jumps, you can gain height on the same wall. You can wall jump up it repeatedly while gaining height. So that's basically what happened there. I paused. Oh, yeah. I was like, can I even save this? And then I was like, yeah, I can save this. <laughs> <laughs> so if you died there, would, how much time would you have lost? That would have been like a 12, 13 second death because that room is all cycle based. It's like the very last room of right. chapter three. I think Teach knows what I'm talking about. It's like yeah. in the middle section. And that would have been, I mean, I'm guessing 12 to 13 seconds is pretty costly for a game like Celeste. Yeah, very, 90%. Very. <laughs> so in terms of practice itself, there's, how does practice work? Is it easy to practice? Is it, um, 
does it have reliable practice like you you basically just reset and you can start in the beginning of the room and just keep and go over and over again uh there's a time and a place i think for different types of practice uh for either individual screen practice or individual level practice or uh the best kind of practice in my opinion is just running the game like doing full runs full no reset runs not resetting just playing the game um but uh but yeah, so like if you're trying to nail a certain strat or whatever, if you're trying to like learn a strat or like if you're having trouble with something, individual rooms are the way to go. Um, we actually have a uh, a very accessible uh, debug mode that we can use to like reset rooms uh, and like practice uh, death cycles and entrance cycles over and over. Uh, and that's which part of the really, game really itself. Nice. Uh, yeah, so like you you can go into like the settings file for the um, like in the in the game folder and change a certain variable from false to true, and then you're in debug mode, and you can just use it. Wow. Um, yeah, so it's really nice. Um, but yeah, it's definitely definitely a time and a place for different types of practice. Uh, if you're just looking to, if you've already got the strats down, and you're just looking for like ways to get consistent, then probably individual levels like as a whole, just play them, do not reset, start to finish. You know, even if you die five times on the first screen, just like, don't even worry about resetting and just practice it. And that's how you get consistent. That is the mentality to have, my friends. Listen to this guy. He knows what he's doing. <laughs> how about you, YP? Do you agree with him? Do you think no resets are the way to go? Yeah, dude, I was doing no resets. Like, at my prime, when I was a prime Celeste player, mm -hmm. no resets were my mantra. And individual wow. level, no resets, too. That's basically all I did. Really. This is, this. I mean, that's, I totally agree. That's the best mentality to have, you know? And... I wish this was more, <laughs> this is, you know, a more it's common right. mindset in the Mario community um, because, you know, it really is the best way. Um, but that's awesome. You guys are on the right track, I think. So let's say there's a new player, a brand new player uh, coming into Celeste, maybe me, for example. Mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> what would you say is the best way to start learning the game? Uh, just play it. Honestly, Celeste is one of the, Celeste is really cool as a speed game uh, because you can learn it completely at your own pace. Like, um, I'm sure it's like Mario 64 in that in that regard. Like, you can just like learn it at completely your own pace. Uh, you know, just like you don't have to do every single advanced strat right away. Uh, right. You can finish the game in uh, an hour or less doing like no strats whatsoever. You know, it, it's just an easy game to play once you've mm -hmm. played it a few times and gotten used to the movement in general. Uh, and you know like step one is just to uh to die less right like getting used right. to the game like, like goes a long way towards that getting used to the movement uh and then you start to learn strats once you die less and less and like it's just a you know you die less you learn more strats and then you die more and mm -hmm. then you die less with those strats and then you learn more strats and you die more with those strats it's just like you know it's a it's a cycle but that's the improve that's the just the method of improvement you know Okay, so it's all right. So the main kind of like mission in Celeste is to die less and less. Mm -hmm. all right. I mean, yeah, exactly. you're right in the sense that in Mario, it's very natural. Yeah, it's probably it's not. The, it's simple, probably not yeah. exactly the same with Mario because it, like deaths are a lot more costly. No, no, yeah, but, yeah, of uh, course. But, but yeah, the idea exactly. of it being easy to get into and easy to finish the game and yeah, yeah, sure. exactly. And okay, yeah, awesome. Um, does Celeste, I'm guessing Celeste has a Discord. Mm -hmm. They have like their own Discord. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, okay. So that's another thing they have. In terms of like resources with tutorials, is there any tutorial yet? Maybe? Yes. yes. Uh, actually, Bentezi, who commentated the race, made a really good any percent tutorial. Oh, uh, it goes screen by screen, level by level. Um, and yeah, he's uh, he goes really in depth. It's It might be slightly outdated, but for anybody learning the game, it's definitely a... Uh, premium resource for for learning for sure okay uh when it comes to like routing and stuff have have uh how does the routing work i mean i'm guessing it's pretty straightforward considering you're basically just going through chapters yeah it's it's super straightforward um mm -hmm. like the main like the one chapter i think where routing actually comes in the play is chapter six and mm -hmm. uh the screens that we take in chapter six, with the exception of one like branching path, like there are a bunch of branching paths in chapter six that we don't normally see in the speed run because generally everybody goes the same way. But uh, there's one, the last choice you have between top and bottom 
uh, you can actually go top as well. It's actually slightly faster to do so, but the screen is a lot harder. So you'll see most runners go bottom. Uh, it's 0.3 seconds faster to take the top screen if you do it perfectly, but it's really difficult to do perfectly. So you'll see runners take the bottom. But uh, as opposed like um, like as opposed to that system, you know, in other chapters, they're like it's pretty straightforward. Uh, mm -hmm. You know, just screen by screen. You know, we know exactly where to go, so just have to do it. Really good game. I'm looking forward to trying it out. Um, so YP, do you do all the strats that TGH does? Do you guys both do the same strats? Uh, at this point, I'd say no. Like I've been kind of behind on strats since like right June, I'd say like early June around GDQ. I kind of stopped I... paying attention to all the new strats. There's just so many. It's okay. like corner boosting becoming more prominent. So there've been that, a lot more. There've been a lot more um, strats added on since GDQ. Just constantly, really. Oh. Maybe not as many as like way back in the day, but it, like there's like one or two a week. It seems like at least. Like wow. Ones. Yeah, it's definitely died down since like since the months leading up to GDQ, but like. Uh, you know, it's it's still it's still just a very quickly developing speed game, um, and you know it's it's uh, it, it's it's pretty amazing to see. I from mean, dude, my standpoint especially. I mean, that just makes it better, more exciting. Yeah, and e even even uh, you mentioned strats like differences in strats. Um, mm -hmm. Even two players who are completely up to date on strats, like you know, they you will you will not see them ever do the same strats like. Like it's you know like two players will never ever do, like every room the same. Uh, it's wow. like Celeste is really personalized in that regard. Uh, you can just like, you, you know, there's so many different ways to clear each room. Like for instance, in Golden Ridge, I think the first five screens in Golden Ridge, you can do a total of like 15 different ways. It's actually like ridiculous that you can do that it. That is, and you I won't mean, see two runners do the same thing. That's a whole different dynamic that I've never, I'm not used to that because I'm so used to there being fixed strats, you know? Yeah. That's really cool. It's all, it's, it's all just what's comfortable, you know, like, cause like one strat might be 0.1 second faster than another one, but if one runner is more comfortable doing it, then they're going to do that one. Right. You know, and just like, yeah, it's, it's yeah, a totally. trade off, but it's, it's, it really personalizes each, uh, each runner's routing. Naturally. Yeah, okay. Well, we have to wrap up now. Uh, we're going to get started with the SMW race real soon. Uh, I'd like to thank both of you for joining me. I really appreciate it. No problem. My, my pleasure. I hope you guys enjoyed it. And I hope to, get, I hope to see you soon in, in our future events. We definitely want to incorporate more Celeste stuff because it's obviously a banging game right now. And yeah. Thank you so much, guys. I appreciate it. We're going to get on to the SMW. And we'll see you guys later. Thank you so much for, for joining and helping us out. All right, it's a pleasure, no yes. problem. Love you. See you guys later. Thanks, guys. Bye-bye.